Hey guys, Edbud here. You may remember me from videos such as Revenge of the Zoomfly 3 and Beast and Company's Summertime Smile Factory. <laughs> but seriously, today I'm saying yay or nay to more forthcoming running shoes. So after the first episode went so well in this series, I've got four more forthcoming running shoes that I'm gonna be saying yay or nay to. If you haven't done already, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below so you're informed when new videos are launched. Also, smash that like button. Comment below and tell me whether you are looking forward to any of these running shoes in today's video. So coming at the end of April is the Nike Pegasus 37. I did it. Only took me five attempts to get that right. So that next iteration of the famous Pegasus series is gonna be with us very, very soon. This time, some differences are a four foot zoom air unit. I know it was a full length zoom air unit, so whether it means they're sectioning them up, maybe a rear heel zoom air unit, and then one in the four foot this time. I think that's probably what they mean. You've now got a mid foot band coming around the sides of the foot to help secure that lockdown. I'm interested to see how that affects the fit. I've always quite enjoyed the fly wires on the Pegasus 35 and the 36. Just worked out really well for me, that shoe. Here's my beat up second pair of 35s here. Yeah, I really enjoyed the fly wires on this. I'm really tempted to do some sort of deconstruction video of this. If you do want to see that, please let me know in the comments below. I've seen some pretty cool videos of people using various methods to take the midsole off of here, so I'm quite tempted to do it. This one's pretty dead now. I think it's done about 300 miles and there's, there's not an awful lot of spring left in it. Certainly going to be put out to pasture. So there's a separate upper and an underlay as part of the top section of the shoe and then this midfoot band. So I really hope it doesn't make the shoe overly warm. This is going to be a shoe I'm going to be using now it's got warmer. It's about 7 a.m. while I'm filming this now and it's already 9 degrees outside so it's going to get up to about 20 degrees C today. So fingers crossed that it's not too hot for those people in warmer climates, obviously the UK is not really that warmer climate, but lots of you across the world are wanting to use this shoe. Let's hope it doesn't make it too warm. Yesterday, the custom Nike by you version of the Pegasus 37 was on the Nike site. You couldn't actually buy the shoe, but you could customize it. So have you seen in the images there, I've created my own custom color. I think this one stems from me watching the Transformers movie the other day. I really liked Hot Rod. He was always one of my favorite characters. I have literally created the Hot Rod Pegasus 37 there. I always thought the name that they gave him when he transformed into this sort of improved version, Rodimus Prime, was just a bit lame. Yeah, my wife was just shaking her head when she saw me watching that the other day. Like, there's a 40-year-old man sat watching the Transformers movie. The custom version of this shoe was up at about £119. So I fully expect a round about £100 release, which is typical, really, for the Pegasus series. So as you've guessed, this one is a firm yay for me. Will the React midsole have a positive effect on this shoe? I'm gonna hold my thoughts on this one. You guys all know what I thought about the Zoomfly 3. I'm a bit anxious about it, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. So a real favorite on this channel in terms of the viewers in the comments is the line from Socony, this new endorphin line that's gonna be releasing in July. People were so upset when Socony announced that they were gonna delay these shoes, but we can all fully understand why there's a very good reason. So first up to the endorphin speed. No carbon plate in this one, there's a TPU plate to add a little bit of rigidity to that midsole. I'm kind of thinking that this one's gonna be a little similar to the Rebel from New Balance in terms of the implementation of that TPU plate in the midsole. We've got an eight mil drop, we've got the Power Run PB foam. As far as I'm aware, if I'm wrong, please let me know, and I know you guys will. That foam uses p backs which is the same type of plastic that's blown to create the Zumax foam. Now, interestingly, the weight is reported to be only slightly more than the Endorphin Pro, which is obviously going to be their top-line model. I think it's only going to be about a $40 difference between the Speed and the Pro. So it kind of places it in this sort of middle-of-the-road area, which is a little bit below the top-line model, but without the carbon plate. I think there's so many tempo-type shoes at the moment, higher pace training shoes. I mean, we've got the Fuel Cell TC. I'm really enjoying this one at the moment. I've read a lot of people are saying that this shoe is very spongy when they're first starting to run in it. They're really having to think about their form. I kind of felt a little bit like that when I first got the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. 
but you know this is a great option albeit a much more expensive option than the endorphin speed will be there's loads of cheaper pairs of the pegasus turbo 2 knocking around at the moment as well so again i'm thinking is this shoe for me i think in terms of the price point it's very much going to depend whether i really enjoy the pro as to whether i invest in the endorphin speed for me so at this point it's going to be a no next shoe on the list is the endorphin shift so the endorphin shift is going to be about $20 less than the speed. A much heavier shoe by all accounts, this one. There's a very different implementation of the foam as well in the midsole. I think it's going to have a top layer of Power Run Plus, and then the rest of it's going to be Power Run. That shift geometry looks a little bit more like the Asics Glide Ride to me, or perhaps even the Zoom Fly. You've got that very pronounced curve at the front of the shoe. So it does seem to have a real pronounced curve, very similar to the Zoom Fly here. It's a rigid shoe, that one. I'm really struggling to see major differences over the Shift and the Triumph 17. Weight's certainly going to be similar in my size. Possibly the upper's going to be a little bit more breathable, perhaps a little closer to the upper that's on the Speed and the Pro. That's definitely one downfall of the Triumph, is that upper's very considerable. And I've noticed on some runs recently in warmer weather that it started to get a little bit uncomfortable. I think perhaps if I really enjoy the Endorphin Pro and it's rocking and rolling, dancing late at night like a Jonathan Richmond tune, then I think it might shift into view. But at the moment, for me, it's a nay for the Endorphin Shift. I don't believe it can be better than both of them. But I'm always happy to be proved wrong. I shall discuss the Endorphin Pro in a future video, so don't worry, I haven't forgotten. Last shoe up today is that of the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. I will say straight away that this is a yay for me. I'm very interested in that DNA flash midsole material and a much more reasonable weight. So oh, she's just been very heavy recently. People have been giving me all sorts of stick about this one as well, about how heavy it is. It is a shoe on the heavier side of life. So again, this is another midsole foam. Brooks have utilized their Bio Go foam and injected it and cooked it up with nitrogen. Nitrogen's the stuff, obviously, to make your foam more exciting. I'm anticipating something along the lines of the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel, perhaps, but without that flying it upper, perhaps a more locked-in experience in terms of fit over the top of the foot. That was always my beef, really, with the Fuel Cell Rebel. It just didn't feel quite as locked in as I wanted it to be. The weight certainly seems to be nice and low on this one. I mean, low more in terms of like a Pegasus Turbo type low weight. It's just nothing to this shoe. There's even loads of paper in here, it still feels like. So it could present a quite a usable shoe rather than just one for faster pace work. I have to say I have ordered this shoe directly from Brooks. It's supposedly on the way, but it's taken an absolute age to turn up. I appreciate absolutely that there are bigger things to worry about at the moment. But I think the slow and somewhat old-fashioned style updates from the Brooks website are just not in keeping with 2020. It looks like for some time that there have been major issues with update of orders from Brooks going back through looking at some internet reviews of their delivery and it's very hit and miss, very slow, even way back in early 2019. So let's hope that it turns up sometime soon. I don't know when that could be. I could walk down the stairs now and it might be waiting outside for me. Who knows? So certainly the Brooks Hyperion Tempo is a yay for me. That's all for me for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this new episode of Running Shoe Yay or Net. Please do leave your comments below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when new videos are launched. Smash that like button. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.